Hello, um, my name is Wendy Ewing. I'm a photographer from Paris suburbs. Um, I work uh, across different fields, fashion, portraiture, sports, travel, um, documentary, often exploring the themes of identity, culture, and place. Um, and one of my latest projects uh, was a series of portraits of Asian women, which was a way for me to represent a community that we often misrepresent and stigmatize. But tonight, I'm going to talk about another project, that, another passion that I have, which is the suburbs. I came to London to study at St. Martin's, and it really was my back and forth between London and my hometown in the eastern suburbs of Paris that I kind of questioned this love-hate relationship that I had with my suburbs. So I started documenting my commutes um, in the RER, which is the, the suburban trains in Paris. That's also when um, I started doc documenting uh, people on the street, taking their portraits in my hometown. And that's when I started becoming interested in documentary photography. But when I came back to London to talk about the suburbs of Paris, everyone had more this idea of La Haine, Mathieu Kassovitz, cars burning, riots. And I was just like, I mean, okay, anyone who doesn't come from Paris suburbs is not like this. Yes, they are rougher suburbs and there have been uh, riots for very specific reasons, but they're not dangerous places or no-go zones like people used to portray the, the suburbs. So that's what led me to create Arcades magazine, which was actually my final year project. Um, and through our case, I just really wanted to portray what it felt like living in the margins of a city and what, what the suburbs really are, uh, not representing the suburbs because it's a trend, but just, yeah, just telling people what they are and also telling my own experience of it. And um, our case is a publication where you could find a series of documentary photography, interviews, portraits, but for me it was also a way to, to work with my friends, uh, to work with photographers whom I really love the work. And it was a space for me also to, to start my career as a photographer. Arcades also gave me the opportunity to meet Gérard Granval, who's uh, pictured on the left-hand side, uh, who's the architect of Les Choux de Créteil. So Les Choux it actually translates as the cabbages, uh, so the cabbages of Créteil. I think someone probably thought it looked like cabbages. I mean, they were not supposed to be called the cabbages of Créteil, but yeah, that's how people know them. And um, they became very famous, especially in that 70s era of utopian architecture. Um, and yeah, so I had this amazing time meeting Gérard, had a coffee with him in Paris, and he was telling me in 1998, he visited the local primary school uh, organized with the school a uh, drawing competition. And after our coffee, he sent me an email with all those drawings that you can see on the right-hand side and poems that he kept at home. And I was thinking, I mean, they're so amazing. We need to do something with those drawings. So that kind of stayed in my mind for a few years. And um, in 20, 2019, I met my friend Jessica Pichet, uh, who is a French art director, and uh, she grew up in the Chou. I was telling her about these drawings and the competition, and actually she participated in this competition and also won it. So that's, yeah, all of this to say that's how we started the project, um, Les Choux de Créteil, the subject of the night. And it's a social documentary project that I've been working on uh, with Jessica for over two years two years and a half, and um, again, I don't know if anyone knows uh, these buildings, but they're very iconic. There's been a lot of fashion shows that have been done there, there's been a lot of films that have been made there, but we don't really know who lives there, and um, we don't really know what it looks like inside as well. So we really wanted to tell the story of architecture and of these iconic buildings through the residence. So we spent two years meeting people, uh, the, the teachers in the local schools, the social actors of the neighborhood. We 
Also, like every time we met people in their flats, I managed to get different perspectives of the buildings. And yeah, we just started to know a bit everyone there. Um, just made friends, went to see some football games. Every time we also collect archives from residents uh, of when they started moving uh, in the shoe. And this project coincided with the 50th anniversary of these buildings. And we thought, be the great time to reorganize this drawing competition. So we did that. We reorganized the drawing competition with the kids, and that was also the architect's wish at the time. And we, it was amazing to, like, to give access, because I think coming from the suburbs, you don't necessarily have this access to the arts and culture, especially at schools. And yeah, that was for us so important to give this access to the kids. Uh, so we, we organized this competition, we organized uh, an award ceremony as well, where they had each a diploma, medal, prizes, all the work is gathered in a book as well, and it really helped us give value to the kids' work. And for this anniversary, we also uh, thought that was the best time to exhibit the work we've been doing for over the last two years. So we created um, a outdoor exhibition, like a photographic walk. As you can see, we were just sticking, I mean, we were literally like sticking the pictures uh, in the neighborhood in the streets. We were a bit terrified with this purple color glue, but yeah, it dried transparent in the end. Um, but yeah, it's, it was really a way for us to to kind of, having all the pictures outside was a way for us to, to show like we could rediscover a neighborhood or discover a neighborhood as well and trying to follow um, the photos. And it made so much sense to share the project the first time with the people we met and photograph directly in the heart of the neighborhood. And also as a photographer, as a documentary photographer, it really questioned me on how do you share a project and what is the best way to do it? And I love this picture on the right-hand side. Those two girls were trying to spot them on the, on the picture, trying to spot their friends as well. And yeah, there was this sense of pride and joy that, you know, it made you realize that this project, you do it for them, not for you, you know. So yeah, that was, uh, that was an amazing exhibition in September 2022. Two months later, uh, we had the opportunity to exhibit the project for the first time in Paris, um, in the old tatty shop in Barbès. I don't know, anyone French or from Paris might know this shop. It's a shop where you used to find all the bargains um, in the north part of Paris. And uh, the shop closed down. There's a French label that Maison Chateau Rouge that took over the space to host cultural events, talks, exhibitions. And thanks to them, we managed to, we had this opportunity to show the project. Uh, and that's how we showed the project for the first time in Paris. Um, the space was amazing, although it was completely gutted, there was no lights, there was nothing. So we had to reimagine the whole scenography and, and that was also the time for us to show more work, show archives, show, uh, we had some interviews as well, film and audio. And that's also uh, the space where we showed the artwork from the kids who won the competition as well. And we just wanted to add ourselves a bit more work, so we hosted a series of talks as well, uh, questioning what the culture of the suburb is. And we love working with kids so much that we also um, organize sculpture workshop for kids. We also organize cooking workshop, um, yeah, again, to give this access for free to the kids. So really, this is just the start of the project because the project will develop further and uh, hopefully culminate into a book in the coming year with the material shown tonight and also there's a lot more things I haven't shown you yet. It's a very special project because nothing has been done uh, about these buildings and even less about the residents. And also Gérard Granva passed away in December 2021, so that's a way to pay homage to him and his work as well. 
to finish, uh, doing this project really opened my mind uh, on my photography practice, the role of a documentary photographer. It's not just about the final imagery, uh, of course, it's all about this thinking when you start a project, the process, the social practices, how you share the project with the people you met and where. And it really is Les Choux de Créteil and Arcades, a note to my love for documentary photography. I encourage everyone to do documentary work because there's nothing greater than creating encounters with strangers, uh, getting to know them, tell their stories, stand up for what you believe in as well, and it's even better when you can do it with your friends. Thank you to His Nice Dad for having me. Thank you for listening.